Love is Blind, season six, episode 12. Gather the data. Oh my God. I'm trying to stop saying that. Hey, cousin, I finally watched episode 12, the finale of Love is Blind, season six. And can I say, girl, <laughs> I am so proud of Jimmy, but baby, I take my hats off to Clay. I always knew Clay was a very well-rounded young man with his head on his shoulder. Mm -hmm, girl. Did you watch? OMG, it was so good. Let me tell you, I rebroke my bed that was already broken that we're not replacing until we move to our new house, whenever that is. But when I say I was jumping on my bed and screaming, <laughs> my husband ran upstairs like, baby, what is it? What's wrong? <laughs> oh, it was really good. And my predictions were 99% correct. What did you think about the finale? Love is Life season six. Did you expect what was going to happen that happened? And how do you feel about it? Be sure to subscribe, thumbs up, share this out if you can. Hey, cousins, welcome to all of our new cousins. I have a new Hey Cousin t-shirt coming very, very soon. I absolutely love your shout out and welcome. Thank you for your love and support. Be sure to subscribe, thumbs up. I want to remind you that the Husband Profile course begins April 6th. And I have free samples of the hus My Husband Profile. And gather the data. Dating is for gathering the data sample. We all will be linked below. Be sure to download your sample. Quick, 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 girl. All right. Yes, you know, I have pictures. I got the pictures, girl. I was separating my socks drawer last night because I'm decluttering and going through stuff and tossing stuff. And you got too much of this. And I was watching and taking the pictures. Okay, so we start out on episode 12 with, okay, let's back up. Episode 11, Jeremy got is done with Laura. Laura is done with Jamie. J Jeremy and uh, Mary Ann, Sue Ann, Laura Ann, Kenny Ann, Sarah Ann, when, ski, whatever. Okay. Episode 12. Jimmy and Chelsea went to uh, ride the roller coaster that he used to do a lot of things when he was, when he was younger. So they had a wonderful time. And so they sat down and he said, I don't even know if we're going to get married. Are we going to get married? And she's like, yes, we are. And so on and so forth. And it just seemed as if something happened that we didn't know. And Jimmy says, but I don't want to go to the altar. I can't. And I was like, yes, Jimmy! Yes! Chelsea is a crazy nut. She is a nut. You cannot marry her. You, Jimmy, cannot pledge the rest of your life to stay with this crazy, psychotic woman because your life will be a living hell. And he brought up again what she did. Like, I told you something in secret for you to trust me. And what did you do? You 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 spread it all on national TV. <clears throat> and he said, you're really messing things up for that girl. He said, I don't care about me. I don't care about my honor. I care about her honor. And I told you something because I wanted you to trust me. And I'm being honest with you, but you just threw it back in my face. And she said, yeah, but yeah, uh-uh. I noticed that with Chelsea. Every time Jimmy talks to her about something, she likes to say, yeah, but you. But you did this and you did this. Uh-uh, Chelsea. This is about you being crazy. 
dare I say, Chelsea ain't never gonna get her no good husband. I'm sorry. Chelsea is gonna need 20 years of psychological help, medicine, therapy, coaching. She is so messed up that ain't no good man going to stay with her. She might as well go ahead and call what's his name from last season who's looking for a woman to take care of him. Her. Because another thing Chelsea said that I want to do a separate video on is she said, I, I, I don't need you to take care of me. I got my own money. But Jimmy says, but I want to take care of you. So since Chelsea don't need a man to take care of her, even though the man is telling you to your face, I want to take care of you. Me taking care of you and showing my love to you, expressing my love is me buying you dinner. Well, I don't need you to do that. I just need you to tell me you love me. Chelsea ain't never going to get her no good husband. <clears throat> Pack up your bags, buy you some cats, get you a dog, Chelsea, because you will never get you a good man that's going to love you, provide for you, and protect you because you are so messed up. Just go ahead and get you a Dusty, Chelsea. Chelsea, Dusty Pookie Ray Ray. I don't know what they call them over there, over there in the white community. That is going to be your portion, baby. You will never get you a good man that's going to love you. Sorry. So moving along, it is Clay's and AD's wedding. I'm telling you where they got married. Mary looked absolutely beautiful. And did you see the sign that says coming soon or almost there? I was like, oh my God, oh my God. One thing I wa I that bugged me watching this episode 12 was AD was so unaware and too confident for me. And I didn't like that because especially for a man, when a man is unsure and he's iffy, iffy, girl, you can't put your trust in him. What the Bible says, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. He is like a chaff in the wind blowing back and forth. And that man will not get in nothing from God. So ladies, when your man is like this, you can't put your confidence in him. You cannot trust him. I thought what they said at the altar was absolutely beautiful and wonderful. I thought, um, wait, let's back up. Clay's father, he looked like a player, don't he? Like Clay's father looks like a a a a, a pimp for the 24th, 21st century. And I when I saw Clay, I was like, why he look like my bishop? Not my father in the faith, my other pastor that I was church I was going to when I got married. A D, where's the picture? A D looked absolutely phenomenal. She looked beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And I'm going to use her picture for the, um, for the, for my, uh, my thingy. Absolutely beautiful. And so they get to the altar and they're saying what they're saying. And, um, he said, I didn't take pictures of these because I was like screaming like, yes! He said, I, I am not ready to be a husband. I can't say no. Yes. He said, it would not be responsible 
of me to say yes. I am not ready to be a husband. Glory, hallelujah. A man must be ready. See, ladies, we're in a beautiful gown and, and we look real pretty and we have our flowers and we're going to be taken care of and we're going to be provided for and he's going to love us and he's going to take a, a powwow for us and he's going to jump in front of the bear and if the door somebody breaking he's going to run downstairs we are being protected provided for profess to all we got to do is okay honey <laughs> a man must be ready independent of you he must say yes i am ready to be married i am ready to be a responsible adult i am ready to be responsible for this woman i am ready to protect her i am ready to provide for her i am ready to profess my love to the world for her a man must be ready. Come on, somebody. And Clay said, I am not ready. It would not be responsible for me to say yes right now. And I was like, Clay, would you listen to my videos? I say, Clay, I take my hat off and I bow to him. Because I wish more young men would say, I am not ready. I am not ready. And here go AD in front of the pastor. What the F, Clay? That AD, her mouth? I don't know, child. First, you don't throw the F-bombs in the scriptures. Then the pastor standing right there and she what the F claim. Thank you, Clay. I know I said some things about you. I take it all back. <laughs> but when he said it would not be responsible, of me to say yes. And he said this whole process have helped him to see himself. <clears throat> and this is what my daddy was talking about. A man must be ready. He must go through the process to be ready. You must figure out who you are as a man and you must be ready to commit to this woman for the rest of your life. And my father said, just imagine eating chicken for the rest of your life every day. That's what marriage is. And everybody was like, oh, oh my God. <clears throat> you could hear a pin drop. And she turned and looked at her mama and her mama switched her hand and she's like, we ready. She walked down the aisle. That dress was fitting, girl. And 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 let me just get to the part where he said, so he's walking his job. He's walking to his job. He says he's he's walking with his dad. Beautiful ranch. Listen to what he said, y'all. This is the person I'm about to marry. And he's asking his dad, should I go talk to him? And his dad said, yeah, you know, you don't want, you don't want her to think blah, blah, blah. And Clay's marriage is a unity of self. It is a unity of finances. It's a business decision. And ah, glory be to God. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you. Pastor Clay. Pastor Clay was preaching. He says it's a business decision. 
okay? He said, a lot of work that needed to be done was my emotional empathy side. He said, I think the finances, I looked at it, brushed it off, but finances is huge to me and I don't understand her finances like that. Come on, church. He says, and at the end of the day, eternity is forever. Glory, hallelujah. Pastor Clay was preaching last night. He said, at the end of the day, eternity is forever. Uh-huh. And if I'm going to be something forever, I want to be locked in 100%. Now, let me tell you about men. Men are very analytical. Uh -huh. You see, Clay was being analytical. Women were emotional. He said, and if I'm going to be something forever, I want to be locked in 100%. And so the mama and the daddy's talking and, and you could tell she still loves him. Look at that. You see that look in her eyes? She love him. And he said, the daddy said to the mama, well, you should tell him to get a, a woman like his mother. I told, tell him to find a woman like his mama, meet a woman like his mama. And she said, yeah, but you met me, but you was good to me. Jesus have mercy. Huh? You met me, but you was not good to me. I forgot to put my banner up, y'all. Hallelujah. You met me, but you wasn't good to me. And he couldn't say nothing. <coughs> Excuse me. Because the mama was telling the daddy that, listen, I learned some stuff about our marriage when clay was going through the while he was going through this process stuff that i didn't know and that really hurt me and he said he saw some things he should not have seen as a child and that really messed up his head and let me just say this when clay is ready to get married he's gonna make him a good husband mm -hmm. he gonna make him a good husband Tell him to meet somebody like his mom. Mm, she said, yeah, but you met me, but you wasn't good for me. Now we go to AD and I'm like, AD, he, this is not the man for you. Let's read some of this stuff. ADs. I just keep feeling like I keep getting so effing close. And I keep like doing so much for these men. That's your problem, AD. Your problem is you keep doing so much for these men and you're not letting them do for you. Huh? And if you was paying attention, if AD was not emotional, granted, God created us as emotional beings, right? <clears throat> I always say men are 75% or 80% analytical and 20% emotional. Women are 99% emotional and most are not analytical. Because if AD was listening to Clay throughout this whole thing, she wouldn't have put her confidence in him. Mm -hmm. And she said, I keep doing so much for these men, keep carrying these effing relationships. And I don't like, I don't know what else to do, really. You need to take the husband profile course, AD. Like, it's just not enough. Mm -hmm. I love him. I love him. I really do. That's the problem. You love him, but Clay late said, I'm not in love with her. <laughs> See, there's a difference between loving somebody and being in love with them. <clears throat> I'm really sad that. I wasn't enough for him to like get right. That's your problem, AD. You want him to get right for you versus him getting right for himself. Because see, if he gets right for you, 
and when y'all stuff is not going good with y'all, is he going to get wrong? See, when a man get right for himself, no matter what comes, no matter what goes, he's right for himself. That's, that's what we call character and integrity. <clears throat> you wasn't enough for him to like get right. No. She said, I can't drag, I can't force him. And I'm not going to effing beg him to effing pick me. <clears throat> oh, and then there was another marriage show. Yeah. The other marriage, Amy, Johnny, they got married, blah, 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 blah. We love Amy's daddy. And I pray and hope that every woman, every young woman will have a father like Amy's daddy from base off of what we see, how he loves his daughter and care for her and cherish her. And when he gave her away, let me just run their pictures just to be fair. When he gave her away, he said, I am giving my treasure to you. Mandio side. Ah, glory. He says, I'm giving my treasure to you. Ladies, you are a treasure. As a matter of fact, I have a book called The Treasure. I got I got published it. I got published it. So then he said, I feel stupid. So his emotions are all over the place, especially seeing, I guess for me, I didn't understand the marriage of the decision. Hmm. Marriage is a decision. He's not ready to make that commitment. He didn't understand it. I didn't understand the magnitude of the decision. No, you didn't. I don't see myself continuing to date him. You better not. If you date him, you're a pick me and you're a dum dum. Her heart is broken. But he was telling you that all the time, AD. I stood 10 toes the whole time. That was your problem. You went all the way in and he wasn't all the way in. I've been strong and powerful. Yeah, that's what strong and powerful get you because you wasn't paying attention. Huh? She's been strong and powerful. That's just who I will remain. <clears throat> I'm just, I don't know. I just, I'm waiting for it to be my turn. It wasn't your turn, girl. And it's going to be a minute because you need to learn some things. I just don't know. She, want, she wants it to be her turn. It wasn't your turn. Somebody TikTok her, Instagram her, tell her to sign up for the husband profile course, girl. Because... You had to be blind to think Clay was ready to get married. And somebody say he's an F-boy. No, he's not. Not because a man is not ready to get married to you mean he's an F-boy. It just means he's not ready. And a man has to be ready. Huh? A man, when a man gets married, y'all, he's dying. He's dying. How many people... How many men do you know are ready to die? That's what women don't understand about marriage. That's why I'm working on my marriage book. <clears throat> A man has to be ready to die for you, literally die for you. And if he is not ready to die for you, it does not mean he's an F4. It just means he has not met the woman he wants to die for yet. I love you. Let me know what you think about my review. Uh, my cash app is below. I know a couple of people email me for it. Uh, my samples for my books are below. So pick up your sample. Data is for data sample. Uh, my husband profile sample. Pick that up. Leave a review for me over the year. And let me know. I absolutely love you, my darlings. I will talk with you later. Bye.